Hello everyone, this is Leon Vanguard of Vanguard Spinning, and today we're going to show you how to electro etch your metal. Let's get started. Okay, first thing to note when electro etching a piece is to always wear eye protection. You're dealing with electricity and there will be slight sparks and you want to make sure that it doesn't get in your eyes or jump out at you. Also, you never want to be touching your material while both electrodes are hitched. Between different stages and while checking your piece, make sure to disconnect the electrodes so you're not going to shock each other. Now we got some safety out of the way, let's get to the actual method of how we're doing this. Okay, here's some basic supplies you're going to need for today. You can paint your tape on a nice little roll. This right here makes life a lot easier. You can always use electric tape or you can use nail polish. As a resist, I find that the acrylic paint doesn't really have good results, so we're not using it. It works well when using ferric chloride or other acids, but today we're using salt water and electricity. So we're using painter's tape, electric tape, or nail polish. But for today's tutorial, we're just using the painter's tape. Okay, moving on. Next, you'll need an X-Acto knife, a very sharp knife, and you kind of blood to work just enough where you can actually draw and cut out your design with it. In my case for today, we'll be using my Japanese utility knife, a Kiridashi, that I forged just for stuff like this. And next, most importantly, your metal. Today, we're doing these breast augmentation pieces for made out of metal. They're just simple bowls, and we're going to be edging some nice lines to create a circumference around the edge. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna speed through this next part. All I'm doing right now is covering the piece all the way around, backside and front side with tape. Okay, now that we're done, the entire piece is covered. I wish I would have done a little more work right here, but just, I have to make sure if I'm cutting along these areas with a little bit of ridge line, that I make sure it, it stays nice and clean. Anywhere electricity and water can touch will get etched. That's why on the back, we do need some spots for our electrodes just to cling on to actually make contact with the metal. So that's what these two pieces are for. They're away from the rim, away from visibility. And those pieces will be etched a little bit, but they're on the back side. And but we actually need this to conduct electricity. Okay, next up. Doing the other one. Okay, I know I forgot to mention this during the last one over here. But when you're putting two different electrodes on the back, it's good to have it on either side, because in the bath, one side will get a little more etched than the other based on how it's swinging and hanging near the electrode. That's why, for the, in this case, we have it on one side and the other. You can do all four sides if you want to be paranoid, but in my case, I did this before. Having it on one side than the other works just fine. All right, next stage. Let's get it, let's draw our lines. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to be using so just some basic measuring tape and the Manila Folder Protractor. It has several holes in it, and in this we can really refine how big we want all our different pieces. In this case, I'm making two concentric rings, and the thickness of the Sharpie is about my guide for how big my lines are going to be. So first, let's find as perfect as center as we can using our measuring tape here. That looks pretty center to me. Let's just embolden that. Looking at it, I'm pretty happy with where that is. So now, I'm going to take my protractor and first draw my line. Taking our other Sharpie, we're going to press it down the middle and watch this. A perfect circle and that's actually kind of where I want the first layer to be I wasn't sure if I get the first try or if that would make me very happy but I like that a lot so for the next one we're gonna make a ring a little further down 
And let's see this. This one looks too far down. Let's make another hole real quick. One moment. You could just stab the paper, but I'm going to be using basic hole punch. Let's make that hole larger. Okay, so going back here, put this on center. Take our Sharpie. Nail it down. This is hard enough, but soft enough that it holds it steady. If it's too hard, it tends to slide. If it's too soft, it doesn't work as well. So let's see if I like the way these lines are, are lining up. Let's see here. I think. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Let's do the second piece. I'll go and speed through this since I went through it the first time. Get out your measuring tape and find center. Here we go. When doing this, do it slowly and carefully and make sure your fingers are never actually in line with your blade. Take the edge of your knife, lift up the tape, careful about that, lifting up what you don't want exposed. Okay, now we got our first ring done. On to the second. Peel that off there. There we go. And there we go. Now to the next one. Okay, before we get begin on this part, I like to have one hand glove, one hand knot. Why one hand knot? Because I'm going to have to get my hand wet, and I don't want a glove, even a gloved wet hand to be touching this water while I'm doing all this. But never have any electrodes on anything until your piece is done, settled, hanging properly in the bath just fine. Now, like I said, we have a salt bath, water, a nice salt water bath here. I diluted a lot of salt and kept making batches of salt water at home in the oven, just using Morton sea salt and boiling it. Just getting the boiling temperature, stirring it around, letting it settle. What you see on the bottom of there is a little bit of lye and a little bit of other, um, just some reduction of some of this, this chemical structure here. So first what I'm going to do is this. There are plenty of other better electrodes, but for now I'm using a steel bar with a nice little hook, dipping out on the side. I like this one the best because just look at that. It just hangs there. We're good to go. That's our electrode for our negative line. Again, we're not going to be hooking any electrodes right now. Next, we have our positive electrode. I have it on a wire here, so when I put the in the bath, it'll hang down where I need it to be in the bath water. This is actually already set. to sit there very nicely, although I do have to make adjustments as needed. So let's grab our piece. I've already gone through and checked to make sure all the different areas are covered properly and that you didn't have any lift up anywhere. I'm hooking up this electrode 
down the piece. Make sure it has a nice grip on that. Bring the cable around, rest it in the water. Again, the negative is not on the line. You do not want to create a circuit while you're messing around with your lines. I gotta find a way so this hangs nice and close and dear, near and dear to the piece. I like to make sure, once it's hanging in there, to have it almost facing head on to our other electrode. That's about good right there. Okay, now that we're all hooked up, I'm using a 12 volt battery charger for a car. Puts out 12 volts and around five or six amps when, when fully lit. But you can also just use a series of batteries or a 12 volt battery at home. This just makes sure I never run out of juice and I don't have to worry about it. So now watch this, we will have a slight spark. That's why we're wearing eye protection. Make sure that submerges all the way. We wanna make sure that salt water is getting all the way in there. Okay, we're all set. And you got a little bit of spark. We're okay. In a second here, you'll start seeing the bass stir a little bit. There are electrons transferring from here to there, oxidizing the metal. Because so what you're now starting to see, we're adding a positive charge to the piece. By doing this, we are attracting oxygen to bond to the metal, creating aluminum oxide. This is essentially aluminum's form of rust. And we are literally eating away at the metal itself in this reaction. Besides shock, the only risk in doing any of this is that we will be giving off a small amount of hydrogen. While doing this, we are breaking up the water bonds, creating uh, a small, minute amount of hydrogen. You're not going to create enough to even create a spark or a fire or anything. But if you do find yourself in the rarer case of being allergic to hydrogen, the slight fume coming off here might make you sneeze. But beyond that, it's completely safe as long as you make sure not to touch or move anything while these two electrodes are connected. Okay, now we're gonna check our piece here. Remove the negative electrode. Actually, let's put this on the ground. We don't want it anywhere near the bucket where it can create a charge. We're gonna lift this out. And you can see there's already this nice blackened color starting on the piece. It's actually seeming to etch more on the bottom than on the top. So like I had planned before. I'm going to turn the piece around. Slide this back in the bath. Get it lined in center. I'm happy with where it's sitting. Lean back a bit and hook up the next electrode. See that little spark there? That's why wearing eye gear and a glove so you can't get shocked. Although, like I mentioned, if you were shocked by this, it would sting, but it won't kill you. Okay, so you see here this reaction? This is how I know you did it right. Hook the positive to the piece you want etched. Hook the negative to the part that's conducting the other side half of the electricity and grounding it. Once you see this nice transfer back and forth from the negative to the positive, you know you're doing it correctly. The first side I do for about uh, three and a half, four minutes. The second side around two and a half minutes because we've already had a, a decent reaction on the other side, but we're doing it on the other side like we are doing right now just to make that a little deeper on the side that was more shallow we hit. You can make up more you can make a more complicated setup to make sure you get all sides all at once, but this works for me. And it's, it works rather well. Let's check our piece. That's why you're wearing eye protection. Get the negative away from the positive electrode. Okay. This piece is done. Hang this on the side.
how do you know when the piece is done? How do you know when the piece is etched enough? Once you can start seeing that little slight pitting deep in the metal, you know you gotta start with a nice solid etch. I could go deeper and deeper and deeper, but I just want this nice shadow along the edge here. You see that? This dark shadow. And we, where you see the texture has changed to around like a 60 grit change. You have enough. Okay, now that our piece has been etched, let's remove the tape and see how well we protected our piece. Get a nice solid etch. When deep, feels nice. I can feel that grit texture. That's what's gonna happen when we polish it. And before I do the next piece, let's go ahead and show you what this looks like polished and then call it a day. Let's go to the polishing wheel. Coming recommended by Tony Swan, one of the best guys in the business for doing armoring or any metal work. He's a really great artist and I love everything that he does. He recommended me the Zam polishing compound for the final polish of my pieces. And it works great. Look it up. It's called Zam buffing compound, all right? Turn this on. Basic polishing wheel. It's basic, just a cloth muslin piece here. This polishes out. There we go. Nice shot. That polish obviously made everything up really, really super shiny. And add a little more darkness to these lines. And I personally love this look. I, if you also realize, I didn't sand this down to a mirror finish. I like all these little tiny hair marks. It lets you know this was made by hand, not just stamped out in the machine. All of my work, I prefer to have this nice tone to it. And so do my clients. Okay, here we go with the final piece. This will be put on her outfit per her instructions. But for now, all we have are two solid pieces of metal, properly raised and dished and planished with a nice finished edge. If you have any questions or any concerns about safety or about what you need to do to do this at home for yourself, please leave it in the comments below. I will try to get back to it as soon as possible. To support the channel, check the link below. And otherwise, have a good night.